Hello, my name's Bill Leslie. I'm a commentator at Sky Sports. On that famous day in April 2018, I was in the commentary box for Sky's championship coverage. My name's Don Goodman and I had the privilege of being the co-commentator alongside the main commentator, Bill Leslie, on that wonderful night. My name's Tim Robinson and I was the match referee for the match in question. I'm Scott Carson and I was the unfortunate one who conceded the goal. I'm Tom and I've been a Wolves fan since I was born, so 26 years. I'm Graham. I've been a, uh, a Wolves fan since the age of eight and I'm currently uh, 69. Well, I was lucky enough to cover the championship for, for quite a long time and I'd done most of the games probably, probably over the previous 10 years. And you could probably pick four or five sides out that just get it right. Wolves, having had so many full storms, there was something about that season where you just thought, wow, these, these guys are the real deal, the recruitment, the, 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 the change of approach and everything like that. And it, it all just clicked. We played Wolves at the, early on in the season and we obviously went into the game thinking we're going to have a big chance of, of promotion and Wolves turned up and the football they played, they just played us off the park. And, I think from, from that day, we knew that they were going to be, going to be right up the top of the league um, majority of the season. I, I think in the, in the Championship at that time, they're probably one of the best uh, Championship teams that I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, Dan the Molyneux knew here and I've seen a few. Um, it was just an all-round good atmosphere within the club. Um, the manager took, took the team and the, the town to heart. and. Uh, it was, it was just a good feeling. Probably one of the Everything best was times on it, wasn't it? Probably one yeah, of the best really, times. Yeah, really, really great times. Yeah. Fabulous times. Well, I think if, when, you, when you look at a player like that coming over and the championship, I mean, it's a, it's a well trotted out cliche, is physical, it's unforgiving. You're playing two games a week. You're playing, you know, um, in these stadiums that are unfamiliar. It's sort of, it's far from red carpet treatment. And with all due respect, again, you know, if you're, if you're playing at Porto and you're a young player coming through, if you're Portuguese under 21 international, you don't expect a player like that to hit the ground running and be able to impose themselves on the league. He was unbelievable. Yeah, he was an unbelievable Absolutely player, unbelievable. A really, really talented player, naturally talented player. Fabulous passer of the ball, always prepared to uh, shoot on sight, I think is yeah. what you'd say. I think he scored six goals yeah. and it was that all, season, was if I all remember out, correctly. All outside the box. All outside the box. I just remember reading about Ruben Neves and his, um, his history, you know, in Portugal and that he was captain at 18 and playing in the Champions League and thinking, what the heck is he doing in the Sky Bet Championship at the time? Obviously, Wolves sold him the project and that's what it was. Um, it was a, a, not a short-term thing. It was a long-term project. Ruben, thankfully bored into it and, and I just remember um, looking forward to, to seeing what all the fuss had been about in Portugal and, um, and hoping that he was as good as everybody told me that, that, that he was and clearly he ended up, he actually was. Well, April, late April, it was coming towards the end of the season. And as you'll know, Wolves were effectively there, all but done and dusted. The results over the previous day had gone their way. So I'd made my way to the stadium, sort of expecting a tough game because Derby was still in with a shout of the playoffs. I think every time you commentated um, on the championship and you were covering a Wolves game, you knew that it was never going to be 
dull, it was never going to be boring, it was always entertaining. So Bill Leslie and I were very much looking forward to being the commentary team on it. It was sort of preparations for the party were around the corner really, was the sort of the feeling that the that the promotion was going to be sealed the following week. I, re I remember it was it was obviously a, a game that we we probably needed to win more than Wolves. We we didn't really get a kick in in the game. It was evident from from that game as it was in in the first first game at Pride Park that they were probably a, a, a lot better team than we were and were rightly up over the top of the league. It was a very kind of end to end game for the fans where it was it was quite electric in the stadium that night from from both sets of fans and. Uh, from a from a fan's point, you know, a football fan myself, to be involved with with something like that was uh, yeah, pretty special occasion. Derby County were usually always a com competitive against Wolverhampton Wanderers, um, and their job obviously on the night was going to be to make it as difficult as possible for what clearly was the best team in the league. In the gantry at Molyneux, we're over the, the tunnel, so it's away to my right-hand side. Fabulous uh, corner yeah. taken by Douglas, I think it's Barry Douglas in the first place. It's obviously headed out by one of the, the big Derby centre-halves. As a keeper, you see the ball going out there and you think, oh, danger's half, half cleared. It wasn't the worst clearance in the world. It was uh, well out of the penalty area from the Derby defender. And there's Ruben Nevis in his usual pocket just outside the penalty area. So you thought, OK, well, there's one of two things he can do here. He can take a touch, control it, maybe have a shot. He can lay off someone else or um, very, various other options that, that players in that position tend to take on. He kind of flicks it up and it's slightly behind and I'm trying to scamper round to get, kind of get a view just in case there's a kind of an offside decision or a line of impact or something like that. Ruben Nevers' touch probably didn't actually go exactly where he wanted it to and had it done we may not have got the end result so I'm glad he slightly miscontrolled it. But the moment he teed it up you knew that he was going to take it on and that first touch although it wasn't perfect it was perfect for what he wanted to do. The touch sort of goes behind him so it's like as soon as he hits it you think Surely he's not hitting that. Yeah, I think I was two, three metres away from, from when he hit it. And uh, as soon as he hit it, you, you knew it was uh, something special. You know, it almost seemed to be in slow motion as he hit it, as it soared over Scott Carson. You realised he wasn't going to get anywhere near it. Probably like he knew, as soon as it left his foot, I, I knew myself that was, I was probably in trouble. Unstoppable, it was unsavable. I felt sorry for the goalkeeper, but I just remember getting sort of carried away with a moment really. I think I just sat on the on the floor after it went in and I think I half had a little little smile to myself and nod my head and smiling as if it's a fair play to you. I remember the pre-season after we played a um, pre-season game at Pride Park against Derby and he tried something something similar from similar distance and thankfully I, I managed to save this one and we leave me alone, you're trying to embarrass me again, but thankfully I got, I got one back and we'll call it 1-1. And when a goal like that goes in, you get a slightly different sound in a state. It's not just like a tap in, it's not like a goal from the penalty spot, it's not like a goal from 12 yards. It's almost an exhalation and an inhalation at the same time. It's like a, a gasp and a roar and then almost people checking with each other to 
actually confirm they've seen what has just happened now and they've seen it right. I mean, there are very, very few moments that you are privileged enough as a commentator to commentate on where it's just perfect. I didn't really celebrate at first because no. I, I didn't, I was just in shock. We were bowing to him, well I, certain, I was certainly bowing to him like some, some god that he was or that he is, an absolute fabulous player. Well I, I judge the, um, I'm part of the panel that judges the goal of the month um, competitions for the EFL and what I tend to look for is, is it likely that I could possibly score a goal like that and if I had a hundred goes at it, how many times out of a hundred would I pull it off? And I can categorically say I would never have scored a goal like that and would never have got one out of a hundred. To me, that was probably the best goal that I had the privilege of commentating on. Well, I, I think he's probably one of the best I've seen, to be fair. Yeah, definitely. recent times. Definitely the best I've seen and probably one of the best I've, I will see, I think. Really, really talented man. The thing about that goal that was special wasn't just that it was an amazing goal and one of the best goals that I've seen live. It was what it meant. It was when it came, obviously, the end of the season, which had been an exceptional season for Wolves. They were pretty much at the foothills of claiming the title, you know, on the steps up to get the trophy. And it was just an outpouring of all the emotion. It summed up everything that had been good about the season. And I think it was just, you know, if you wanted one moment to confirm exactly what that season was to Wolves, then that encapsulated it perfectly.